I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you some basic questions which will help you solve difficult problems based on limits. Now we will prove limit x approaches a for x to the power of n minus a to the power of n divided by x minus a is equal to n times a to the power of n minus 1. You can actually pause the video, do it yourself and then look into my suggestions. Now uh, in the later half of this video, I'll take a few examples where this formula can be applied and you can straight away get the results. The idea is that if you are given multiple choice question in some university entrance examination, you can do those questions in no time, knowing this particular formula, correct? Now to prove this, we are going to use many concepts. Uh, one of the important things is the binomial expansion, right? So normally we write a plus b to the power of n. Since uh, I'll reduce it to something like 1 plus x, I'll write binomial expansion for 1 plus x to the power of n, which is like 1, uh, you can write with, uh, I should not have written 1. Anyway, let me write this as nc0 here, right? Plus, then what you get here is nc1, times uh, 1 to the power of n times x plus nc2 times x squared plus nc3 uh, times x cubed plus so on, right, till, till ncn times x to the power of n, right. So that is the binomial expansion for all this. Now, I know, what is c1? Okay. Uh, we'll write this expansion here and then uh, we'll move forward. So I'll give you a link on binomial expansion, which will help you to understand it further. But let's begin to prove this identity. That is enough, I think. Okay, so let's rewrite this question. We can write this as limit x approaches a. And in the first step, uh, what I will do here is I'll introduce you to another concept. And that is when we talk about limits, let's say we want to find limit at a then we should have limit same from approaching from both sides right so if you're approaching from the right side we say a plus you get an idea right so when i say from right side that limit should be same as from left side also uh, when i say right side that means i'm considering a point here which is very close to a let it be at a plus h where h is approaching zero you get an idea correct so what we're trying to say is that limit of this function is also equal to limit of x approaching a from positive side right for the same function which is x to the power of n minus a to the power of n over x minus a right so approaching a or approaching a from the right side means same thing we could have done approaching a from the left side also. Is that okay? Now, as I'm saying here, that means we are at a point which is a plus h. So we could write this as limit h approaching 0, and I'm just changing x to a plus h. So we get a plus h to the power of n minus a to the power of n over replacing x with a plus h. So this gives you an idea about the difference quotient method, which you learned initially, right? So, so the proof of that limit is kind of similar. Okay, denominator is very clear, it's just h, right? So that reminds you of difference quotient formula, correct? Now how to move ahead with this? a plus h to the power of n, what I could do here is take a common, right? So I have a common and I've left with 1 plus h over a. Is it okay? And everything is to the power of n minus a to the power of n. So I've just taken or factored out a and written in this form. So now we could think that this is kind of like this. Uh, so the first term is a to the power of n times 1 plus h over a to the power of n minus I mean, this is the first term, and the second term is a to the power of n, and all this is divided by h. Correct? 
Now at this stage, we can factor out a to the power of n. So that is the use of doing all that. So if I factor a to the power of n, what do I get? I get 1 plus h over a to the power of n, that's my first term, minus 1. Do you see that? Divided by h. So that is what you get. Now we'll move forward with this particular equation. So now we have this as equal to limit h approaches 0, a to the power of n times uh, 1 plus 1 plus h over a, this is to the power of n, minus 1, so I'm just squeezing it in over h. Now see what I'm going to do. We have 1 plus x to the power of n, so we'll expand this term using binomial expansion. That is how it will be solved further, right? So at times, level 2 calculus or even AB calculus, you may be using more than one concept. So we are left with a to the power of n, and expanding this really means 1, and c0 is 1, right? So we get 1 plus nc1, which is which is n, right? So nc1 is n times h over so n, h over a, plus. The next term is nc2. That means n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial. Is it okay? x is h over a for us. So we'll write h over a whole square, and so on it continues. And the last term here is is minus 1. So I'm not writing all the terms, but they are with h to the power of higher powers, correct? So we have h common in all the factors, correct? So, so that is what you get, and then minus 1 at the end, right? So you get minus 1, bracket close. And this is divided by h, is it okay? This h. So, so that's what we get. Now you can clearly see that this 1 cancels with minus 1. And what you get here is limit h approaches 0, a to the power of n over h. And we have n times h over a plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times h over a whole square plus so many other terms of this. Where you can see x is... Let me write. In our case, x is h over a, correct? So the last term will have h to the power of n. Do you see that? So that h over a to the power of n will be the last term of this series, correct? With ncn. So let's say ncn, ncn is also 1, okay, anyway. Uh, we will have h plus a to the power of n at the end. Okay, let me close this. Important to note here is that h is a common factor. So we'll just factor this out. So we have a to the power of n over h times h. And what are you left with? So if I factor out h, I'm written left with n over a, right? And then here we have plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial. And we get h over a square and so on. Is it okay? So that's what we get. The last term, of course, will be h to the power of n minus 1 over a to the power of n. Okay. Now we can cancel these and substitute h equals to 0. So as soon as you substitute h equals to 0, you get a to the power of n times n over a. And that gives you n times a to the power of n minus 1, right? So, so that is what we wanted to prove. Do you see that? So we have actually complete proof of this particular statement. Now we can always use this formula, which is limit x approaches a for x to the power of n minus a to the power of n over x minus a is equals to n times a to the power of n minus 1. You get an idea, right? So that is the formula which we are going to use from now onwards to solve many 
difficult multiple choice questions, right? So let's take them one by one. So what I've done here is, we have already mentioned this formula here. Correct? I'd like you to take your time, answer these multiple choice questions, and then look into my suggestions.